Hi, this is your host Supil Bharatiya and welcome to TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us for the first time, Dan Brown, Head of Communications at LF Energy. Dan, it's great to have you on the show. That's great to be here. Thank you for having me, Swap. We cover LF Energy here, you know, on a very regular basis. Just quickly tell us what is the, what is the mission of LF Energy? Sure. So LF Energy is, of course, a part of the Linux Foundation. Uh, we were started in 2018 to um, essentially build open source software solutions and hardware solutions and standards and specifications to transform the energy sector. Um, the energy sector is, of course, facing tremendous challenges right now with the transition to renewables and facing decarbonization. So what we're trying to do is bring the community together, everyone from utilities to technology companies to traditional vendors, researchers, and other stakeholders um, to collaboratively develop the solutions that we need to transform the entire power industry, grids, uh, metering, data analysis, um, you, you name it, and we're trying to, um, trying to change it and evolve it uh, so that we can achieve decarbonization and prevent the worst impacts of climate change. Now it's time to talk a bit about this summit. Um, talk a bit about uh, for how long you folks have been doing this summit, and then let's talk about what's going to be the focus for this year. Sure. So the very first LF Energy Summit took place in Edinburgh, Scotland, alongside Open Source Summit Europe in 2018. Um, that was a very small event. I think there were maybe 50 people there. Uh, but of course, we had already launched LF Energy several months prior to that. So it was really just getting off the ground. Uh, the following year in 2019, we had a summit in Paris, um, which is where we're returning this year, actually. Uh, that was much better attended, um, lots of great discussions and, and interaction there. Uh, it really helped um, evolve the community and introduce us to a lot of organizations that were not already familiar with the work that we were doing. Um, of course, 2020, 2021, uh, things were done virtually um, for obvious reasons. Uh, so we're really excited this year to be coming back in person um, to convene uh, uh, LF Energy Summit once again. What is going to be the focus of the summit this year? Yes, so it's a two-day event uh, taking place, as I mentioned, in Paris, June 1st and 2nd. Um, the focus is, uh, th there are a few different focuses, really. Um, the uh, overarching goal of the summit is, one, to bring together the LF Energy community. It's been a long time since our developers, our members, our contributors have had a chance to get together in person. So obviously, we're really excited to get the, get the gang back together um, because we find that these in-person events just really accelerate collaboration and innovation. But beyond that, we're really looking forward to introducing um, uh, our community to the broader energy sector. So we're looking at utilities, we're looking at regulators in North America and Europe and other locations and inviting them to attend so that they can understand why open source is essential to achieving decarbonization and the goals that countries, the UN, uh, companies, private entities are all setting for reducing their impact on the climate. Is this going to be only in person or there'll be a hybrid mode of this event? No, it is completely hybrid. So those who cannot attend or perhaps they're concerned about their carbon footprint and so they would rather not travel long distance can absolutely join us online. All of these sessions um, and content will be live streamed um, for those who want to watch live. And then, of course, uh, later a month or two after the event, we will be releasing all of those session recordings uh, publicly on our YouTube channel. Of course, this is kind of your baby, so it's hard for you to pick and choose. But what are the sessions that you are more excited for? Yeah, so I am personally, for one, uh, I'm really excited about the keynotes that we've already announced. We haven't announced all of them yet because we are still working to confirm a couple. Um, but we have uh, Tony Shannon from the uh, government of Ireland. Uh, who's very involved in Ireland's overall digitalization efforts. Um, he will be presenting. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, obviously, energy is very uh, uh, dependent on and relevant to 
uh, regulators and governments. So uh, getting that perspective, I think, will be really interesting for our audience. Um, and another one is actually uh, a presentation from Linux Foundation Research. Uh, Anna Hermanson will be presenting two brand new research studies that we are wrapping up right now. Um, one that's really focused on how ready utilities are around the world for this kind of uh, transformation. We have surveyed hundreds of um, utility uh, uh, stakeholders and employees in North America, in Europe, in Asia Pacific, um, to present um, this report that is analyzing where they are right now, what challenges are they facing, what don't they know, what resources don't they have, um, what's it going to take to really complete this digital transformation of the energy sector. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing those results presented at the event. Um, and additionally, uh, a second report that Anna will be touching on, and she will be joined by Chris Shi from Futureway, who have sponsored this report, is how to uh, accelerate microgrids. Uh, microgrids are uh, have traditionally been used mostly in developing countries and in very rural environments. But with the uh, uh, onboarding of distributed energy resources around the world, they're becoming much more common. And that presents a lot of challenges uh, when they need to be connected to one another or to the larger grid. And so this report is analyzing uh, what needs to happen uh, to make progress on the microgrid front. Um, so I'm really looking forward to those keynotes. Um, I will also note, though, that uh, you know, we're covering a range of topics, as I've alluded to, um, but something that came through when uh, the program committee was looking at all of the session proposals that we, re we received, we received a huge number, sadly, you know, we could not accept all of them due to time limitations. Um, but there seems to be a lot of movement and a lot of interest on the data front. Um, all of this change that's happening in energy it's going to be largely driven by data. Uh, you need to be able to forecast accurately. Um, and that's going to require huge amounts of data to be collected from, you know, down the line millions, if not billions of sensors on power grids and, and user facilities um, on their meters and whatnot. And then we have to store that data. We have to analyze that data. We have to find ways to actually use it for um, in meaningful ways. And so there are actually going to be, I think, seven different sessions that touch on different pieces of that data puzzle, um, which are just required for all of the other pieces, for electrification of transportation, for interoperability, et cetera. Um, all of that is really reliant on, on good data that you have ways to utilize in useful ways. Of course, it's very easy to go there, register, and attend in person. But uh, can you just talk about who should attend and how they can, you know, uh, register or sign up for the event? Yeah, absolutely. So aside from you know our existing community, which is great, and we're looking forward to seeing. Um, as I mentioned, we really want this event to be a catalyst that can drive awareness of these challenges and solutions in the broader market. So the types of folks that this is relevant to. Number one, utilities. Um, you know, the European utilities are a little bit ahead of the game. Uh, they're more involved than, than anyone at this point. So we're, but, but not all of them. And so we're hoping more European utilities come, but also North American, Asia Pacific, et cetera, um, that are really having a lot of pain points that they're facing going through this transition. And we can help. And, you know, we're not here to sell them something, we're here to teach them how they can help themselves and help the broader community at the same time. So that would be the number one audience. However, uh, I would also encourage um, regulators uh, and policymakers to look at this. Uh, there's a lot of climate legislation happening, obviously the Inflation Reduction Act in the US, there are also a number of European initiatives um, and in other countries. and implementation of those is going to be incredibly complex and open source has to play a key role uh, if we want this to happen in a timely fashion if we're relying on the traditional vendors and traditional methodologies in the power sector it would take decades more than we have to complete this transition and so it's really important that these policymakers and regulators 
understand the technolo technological challenges and opportunities available to them. So we really would like to uh, get them involved here. And then the final one is just any, any developers. Um, we need more developers working on these tools to get them in a place where they can be commercially viable. And so, you know, if you're a cloud developer, if you are an embedded developer, if you are a Linux developer, um, really anything, there are so many different pieces to this puzzle um, and they all require large amounts of code. So we need more developer involvement across the board. Dan, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, and of course, uh, talk about the upcoming LF Energy Summit and uh, hopefully I will see you there in person. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Swap. No, I hope to see you there.